Hi, it's Lance Yolen, I'm Editor Chief of PCMag.com. I'm sitting here with Dean Hakamovich, who is the General Manager for Internet Explorer. Dean, thanks for sitting with us. Thank you for coming to Redmond. So, I am actually, uh, you know, this will probably run online when you are making your speech at the Mix event in Vegas. Okay. But I just want to encapsulate what what's the significance of what Microsoft is doing today with the Internet Explorer platform. Okay. Well, um, it comes down to HTML5. We'll just make it very simple. All right. End of interview. <laughs> <laughs> we could. HTML5 is important. HTML5 is so important, and we love it so much. We want it to actually work. And what we're doing today is talking about our our support in detail and broadly uh, to make HTML5. Uh, really great. In particular, if, if there's one highlight to take home, it's GPU-powered HTML5. HTML5 uh, requires great performance, and you know, we will talk, we will have talked about uh, our improvements in the script engine. People are very concerned about script performance. We'll talk about um, how the same HTML and the same script and the same CSS, uh, the, the same markup, should just work the same everywhere. Uh, it's also called interoperability. So we'll talk about performance and interoperability. We'll talk about uh, the developer preview, the IE9 platform preview being available for download and our commitment to keep it updated approximately every eight weeks uh, on the way to beta. I think the most exciting thing and the thing that you know I'm, we're going to talk about even more um, is the GPU powered aspect. Developers can take the same markup, the same standards markup to make their sites work, and when that runs in IE9, on PCs, uh, they get all the power of the hardware through the operating system. And so you can see the same site um, just run a lot faster and smoother uh, inside of IE. And that's going to be super important for what HTML5 applications will deliver. Looking forward, this is the first step on, uh, you know, toward the release of a major browser update. Yes. Uh, but are you able to, to give any sort of timeline? Like for Joe User sitting at his desk mm -hmm. now, maybe watching, he's going, okay, so I'm using IE8. I downloaded it late last year mm -hmm. and I like it. Uh, should I be preparing to do, you know, to upgrade? Well, the, the best way for consumers to have a good experience today on the way there is, you know, first, upgrading to IE8 helps. Uh, for no other reason, the performance, the safety, the privacy uh, features in particular. Each individual's experience of the web uh, is going to have a few factors. There's the browser you choose, there's your connectivity, and there's the sites you go to. Um, the, the power of HTML5 will come as sites tap into it and as they write to take advantage of the new APIs there. Okay, so the, you didn't actually answer my specific question, so I, that's okay. But it sounds like you're saying that you know HTML5 is such an important part of what's happening with IE9 mm -hmm. that that there's a little bit of chicken and egg going on here. Yes, there's there there there's a cycle where essentially developers need to write their sites to take advantage of these things. It's a lot like what we saw with AJAX and Web 2.0. Right, you went on the web on Monday and things were you know lots of check boxes and submit then it's not like on Tuesday it became all Ajaxy. You know, it took a couple of weeks or months or years as different sites got it and as different sites understood the patterns and used those patterns to deliver better, better websites. We're going to see, I think, a similar evolution path. I don't know how fast <laughs> or how slow uh, it's going to be or how it's going to compare because it'll, it'll come down to how developers use the technology. I if we talked in 1998 about DHTML, Right and, and all those core technologies. I don't know if we'd have anticipated what Hotmail would look like today, or what mapping sites would look like today. There was a there was a happy unintended, very hard to predict outcome. The the thing with HTML5 applications is we expect them to be graphically rich in ways that you know we're having a we're having a tough time articulating. And so we're showing samples, and what developers do with that graphical richness. You know, let's let's see. So the path is kind of long. We don't know where it's going. You can't really even say when uh, consumers might see an IE9 beta, and because you're not even sure what the value would be at this given moment, because HTML5 really isn't there yet. But there, there will be for sure. Okay. HTML5 or not, um, performance improvements. Because, for example, the the okay. the um, I think uh, you saw a sample this morning that mm -hmm. on the one hand used no HTML5 at all. It was old-fashioned graphics. I think it was PNGs. And I think you saw a significant performance difference between non-GPU-powered browsers 
and a GPU powered browser. Is that is that fair? Yeah, that that's definitely fair. So I'm gonna okay. I'll ask this one more time. In IE9, a beta yes. for the common person, the person out there who's just using browsers every day. Right. Is that in the 12 month range, 18 month range, six month range? I I, I can't. <laughs> help you. I want to help you. I can't. All right, all right. So fine. So let's just talk about one other thing that that is that's really kind of interesting. What do you see? What do you see as maybe the conflict or the resolution of the coexistence of HTML5, IE9, Silverlight, Flash? How does that pan out? Well, I, I don't know anyone with perfect predictive power uh, in the technology industry. I think that developers who want to use the exact same markup across all browsers and devices today choose to use a plugin. And then they know that the exact same markup works everywhere. I think that uh, over time, as HTML5 implementations improve and converge in all the ways we've talked about it, um, that you'll see that developers will have more choices there. And how they'll go down one path or another is, com is ultimately up to the developer. Oh, there's no conflict between the Silverlight efforts that you guys are currently engaged in, especially on the mobile side, and what mm -hmm. they're going to be developing for the new Windows 7 Series Series 7 phone. Right. Uh, you know, it seems like the well, they're, they're, you're they're, not because you're not talking a lot about Silverlight during this, and I don't expect right. you will be doing that much of the discussion on step when they go to mobile at Mix. Right. So I'm just trying to figure out right. how See, it in fits some ways, in. In some ways, they're they're complements. I and mean, one is the web and a standard web markup. And it's it's all the HTTP and all the WWW and all the angle brackets and it's it's that interoperable web that standards based web, and we're taking that standards based web and continuing to make it richer, in an interoperable happy way with the community, and we're making it hardware powered, GPU powered, hardware accelerated, so you have this amazing performance. Plugins are a slightly different thing. They're not web browsers and they're not trying to be web browsers. And you know, I do my best to talk only about the things I know something about, and I think they do a very good job talking about the things that they know about. Okay, so in other words, not mutually exclusive. Correct. Uh, these things can work together. All right, is there is there anything um, that you haven't shared that that uh, people might find surprising or especially interesting about IE9, or even just the the sort of journey that you've been on, what you've learned? Uh, mm -hmm. about the process of building uh, the browser. This all started from reading the HTML5 spec very closely. And I, I told you some of those mm -hmm. stories this morning. And uh, looking at HTML5 not as a feature list, but as a way to enable a new class of applications. And looking at it that way, we, we designed IE9 with all these new applications in mind. I think that what will be pleasantly surprising for people as the new browsers come in and as the new sites come in um, are, are some of the other benefits. For example, um, uh, being, uh, using the GPU uh, can in many scenarios mean significantly better battery life because there are all these things that you do on the web that are graphically intensive and being able to use a chip whose sole purpose in life is graphics instead of the general purpose chip can really have a huge change on, on your battery life. And I know that that might seem insignificant, but I think it's one of a dozen things uh, that, that we will benefit from. And a lot of these benefits, I, I think, will look back and go, wow, I wouldn't have predicted that one. But now that I'm using it, it's great. Uh, is it fair to say that one of your core goals, and I'll, I'll make this the last question because anyway, our time is short. One of your core, go core goals for IE9 is to make it the fastest browser on the planet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's an easy answer. That's uh, a great question. Um, we also know that how different people use the web varies tremendously. And we've, we've had pretty deep conversations around benchmarking and how benchmarking works. And you know, we can talk about, I'm on wireless, I'm on, uh, you know, I'm on a cable, I'm using this kind of connectivity, that kind of connectivity. Um, and, and how developers write their sites. Uh, some of the conversations we're having with developers starting at Mix and continuing through the blog and all the other community efforts we have um, involves what are the patterns that are both um, interoperable and super high performance. There is so much that is under a developer's control in writing a fast website and we're excited to make that perfectly perfectly clear to folks so they can write the fastest possible websites.